Hey, today I'm here to talk a little bit about the Prismatic Spray 2. This is a synth I've been working on. It's a sequel to the original Prismatic Spray. Uh, one of the biggest differences is that it runs uh, two byte beat algorithms at the same time. In stereo, they're totally independent or uh, they can run together as well. Uh, this is an OMX27. It's a little MIDI controller that I'm going to demonstrate that you can play chromatically. Uh, it's made by Dan Kyoto. It's awesome. It uses mechanical keys, so it's very feels very nice to play. This is uh, uh, just a little Windows 11 tiny little micro computer that I use in my shop to burn firmware, but I thought I would connect uh, it to the Prismatic Spray to demonstrate one of the new features, and that's web serial display. So whatever visualization you're running, there are 18 visualizations, can be piped out of here, not via HDMI or anything like that, but using web serial. So you need to be running uh, a desktop computer environment uh, on a Windows or Mac computer, and you need to be running Microsoft Edge, Chrome, or Opera. Uh, those are all going to be able to intercept that web serial data and translate it in, via an HTML uh, web page that I created. Uh, and you can see your visualizations on an external device, record them or project them, whatever you want to do. So let's take a quick look at some of those visualizations. So I'm going to hold down this blue button here is the shift button. Uh, so you hold down shift and rotate the gray knob, which is the preset selector. Uh, and this one's kind of from the original prismatic spray. It's like basically pixels. Uh, all of these are available in both grayscale and color. Uh, the color spectrum changes as you change the values of the algorithm you're working in. Uh, but yeah, we've got all kinds of spirals and squares and almost graphic EQ looking things. And this kind of fireworks display, one of my personal favorites, like a radial display. Uh, so what is the stereo aspect and, and how does that work? So across the top, you'll see three new buttons. These, these select the engine that you're using. Left engine's over here, right engine's over here. And this it allows you to select them both and control them globally. Uh, all the parameters would be adjusted that way. Um, so if you press this, now we're looking at, you can see there's like a bi-directional kind of arrow indicator at the very top saying, hey, we're controlling both. Over here, now it's just the right side. Over there, now it's the left side. So let's go to both. You'll see that there's a little waveform display. Nothing's playing at the bottom, so it's just kind of scrolling through nothingness. But if I were to hold down this guy, it's going to start to generate a tiny, probably the tiniest waveform you'll ever see uh, of what's coming out of this thing. And we'll stop. Right now they're set to play exactly um, the same content. So let's go in and let's select the right side and see what happens when we start changing uh, just one side and how they how that sounds. So they can be adjusted completely independently of one another. Uh, you don't even have to run the same algorithm, so we can kind of tap through and select something else. You'll also notice as I rotate the variables, A, B, and C, these are affecting the algorithm that you're hearing. Eventually you'll get to one that has a little, hey, look at me, symbol by it. Uh, and that is going to give you the original parameters from the original creator, which you can see this one says unknown. I don't know if you can read that. It's really tiny. It says unknown because I could not determine the username of whoever had created it, but a lot of them are I now identified uh, and scrolled there. So this is what... So now we have its default settings. Another uh, feature carried forward from the first version is looping. It's expanded upon here. So you loop by holding down shift and then pressing whichever engine you want to loop, whether that's the left, right, or both. And I'm going to do both, so I'm just going to hold down something here. So now I've captured a loop. It's traveling just one direction. If you want, you can hold down shift and then rotate the light blue knob. And if you see a plus minus there, it'll ping pong back and forth. So it reaches the end. Instead of just traveling one direction, it now goes back and forth. And you can kind of... So I'll drop that down a couple octaves with the keyboard here. 
And uh, the loop start and end points can be adjusted by holding the shift key and then rotating either the red knob or the orange. So red controls the this side, orange, it's hard to say start or stop because it's just bouncing back and forth, but uh, let's kick this back up. And we can also just drone notes. You don't need a MIDI keyboard. I'm just kind of playing around with mine here. Uh, this is the pitch knob. You can just kind of turn that on. And that's kind of the default way I always play with it is just, let's just have this go. Over here is the filter. It is an analog filter, digitally controlled. I'm gonna roll out some of those highs. And you can, so you can adjust the start and stop points. Let's do this shift and then we're gonna kind of close the loop a little bit and then the area with which it's traveling over you can kind of slide that underneath your loop points by holding shift and then rotating the yellow knob so I'm kind of pushing the content underneath the loop so if you have a particular area you're trying to focus on or you like you can kind of move that around here. Um, turn off ping-ponging. And now it'll just loop in one direction. Right now it's going in the forward direction. We can make it go backwards if we want. And that kind of sums up uh, the dual engine basics there. So also the visualization right now is attempting to show you a combination of both engines. So let's just take a look at this side. That's where this guy's kind of doing its thing. And then here's this side. And then you can actually visualize them both in a combination. Panning is handled by holding shift and changing the volume knob, so I can kind of pan the engines around. You can pan them at the same time. And that's the craziness.